What is up everyone, it's Sir Deathbits. In this video, I'm going to show you three different ways to paint skeletons for Warhammer or D&D. I began by priming the skeleton with Skull White, which was seen in part 3 of this series. There are a few different styles that you can use for skeletons, and color from white, brown, or gray can be used for the bone. I did the basing material before painting the skeleton, so it was easy for me to paint the feet without getting sand on it. For this I used some PVA glue and the fine sand from my dugout. I just applied the glue to the base and put the miniature into the sand. I also took a wet brush and moved the excess sand away from the feet so that they wouldn't be covered by the basing material. This particular color scheme that I'm doing was inspired by Miniature Mashup, so check his skeleton painting video out too, it's really good. After the basing dried, I began to paint the bones with Talarn sand. I wasn't worried about being sloppy, because skeletons are very forgiving miniatures to work with. These are also what people recommend for beginners to start painting because they're so simple. This gives the bones a muddied or yellow look. I almost forgot the pelvis, so I did that too. Next I put on some Ushapti bone. I put this mainly on all the areas that were not recessed. All the external raised parts of the bone. It was put on the ribs, but not in between them. The shoulder blades, spine, and top of the head were areas that I focused on in this step. After that, Screaming Skull was placed on the most raised areas like the top of the skull, top of the shoulders, and the topmost portions of the arms and the hips. Moving on to the scythe for now, Lit Belcher was dragged along the thick steel blade. Mornfang Brown was used for the wood in the staff. This brings out some of the texture from removing mold lines and it gives it a rough wood look. I accidentally got some paint on the bones, but I was able to fix it using Ushabti Bone again. Administratum Grey was dry brushed, or rather stippled, onto the handle of the scythe to give the wood an older, more weathered look. I realized that I missed a piece between the legs and that it didn't look good so I fixed it. I'll let you figure out why it didn't look good. Gorthor Brown was dabbed on the metal as rust. You could also use Typhus Corrosion if you own that paint. Runefang steel was used for the bevels on the blade to make it look sharpened. At this point, a heavy coat of Agrax Earthshade was applied to the whole model. This gives it a very grungy look, which is something that I really like. After that dried, I used Ushabti bone to add teeth. I got this idea by looking at this real skull. This looked ugly at first, but I later liked it a lot. I could have maybe spent more time on it doing each tooth individually, but it turned out well in the end. Blood was added to the blaze of the scythe to make it look like the skeleton has killed someone recently. After doing the base, you could leave the skeleton like this as a bone dry one, but I wanted to go the extra mile and create a blood skeleton or a freshly harvested one. The glazed blood letter was spread over all the bone areas, with the emphasis being on the rib cage. The sand on the base and sides of the base were painted with Abaddon Black. I would like to thank all the people that are coming to my channel and watching the orc painting tutorial. At the time of recording this video, it was at about 996 views but probably by the time that this video uploads and people watch it after a few days, that video will be at 1k views, which is awesome. I just wish that it was a better video that YouTube was promoting, like one of my more recent ones. Gorthor Brown was dry brushed on the black base to reveal the texture from the sand. 
Something that I'm starting up again is doing Itic Beer's terrain competition. The theme this year is block, so it's any type of terrain that blocks line of sight. I have a very good idea with what to do this year, and I think you guys will enjoy it. I'm going to enjoy it. Your hint for this thing that I'm building is Dunsinane. I thought that there wasn't enough blood for the blood god, so corn red was used to help add gore to the ribcage and create a pool by the skeleton's feet. I couldn't mention skeletons in this video without saying spooky scary skeletons. I just had to. Agrax Earthshade darkened the pool. Then Mephestin Red was dry brushed on top to make the blood pool vibrant again. That was two out of three styles of skeletons. Last one used the same process as the other dry skeleton, but with these colors instead. Karak Stone, Pallid Witch Flesh, Horthor Brown, Agrax Earthshade, and finally to learn sand. You can also do edge highlighting for these if you choose to do so now. I also have the skeleton warrior box which I need to paint up too. So if you'd like to see a video on that of unboxing it and painting, please leave that in the comments below. There's three distinct styles on how to paint miniatures for Warhammer or D&D. I hope that you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun painting these models and making this video. Thank you all so much for watching this. If you like it, please do give me a like and a sub, because that really helps me out, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!